Hey, Dennis, how are you? Hello, Claudio, again. Hello again. So today we're, we're talking, we will, today <laughs> we will talk about uh, double platinum, which okay. was uh, this uh, kind of greatest hits type of album, which it was, I don't know, to me kind of uh, odd that a band that I was at that point, four years old, would release a, 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 a greatest hits record, but I guess Kiss is not a conventional band, and at this point, where they, it's fair to say that they were the most popular band in the world. Uh, it's, it was 1978, it was Kiss Mania. It was uh, the two big sellers of 1978, as I know, were Star Wars and Kiss. So, yeah. yes. what is your recollection of uh, designing the jacket? And, uh, uh, when the job came in to do double platinum, Vinny, you know my co-worker Vinny, who was, who was with me throughout, a lot of the kiss years, most of them. Uh, he did a he did a sketch, and it, and he had two kiss logos, and so I said, oh, uh, great idea, double platinum, two kiss logos. So, uh, so I did the mechanical for that, you know, I, the physical pasting up and putting it together, and uh, I got the kiss logo, and I blew it out to the full width of the album. And I put it at the very top. Then I took another Kiss logo, full width, put it at the very bottom, and that left a space in the center for the title. And what I remember doing was I said, if I just order from the typographer the words double platinum, uh, you know, all caps, uh, Helvetica bold, condensed or something, and I make it 12 inches wide, will it fill the height? I don't know what the proportion's gonna be, and I want it to fill the height. I want it to be, I want it to fit in there as snug as possible. Top, bottom, left, right, boom. Uh, and there's no way to figure that out. Not really, I mean, so uh, I, I said, oh, we have a company called Photo Lettering. And Photo Lettering, they're a little more expensive than most of our typesetters, uh, but they, they, <coughs> they set type in a, a photo, photo method. And consequently, they could, <laughs> they were known for uh, being able to manipulate type, stretch it, bend it, curve it. Uh, and back in those days, that was pretty remarkable because before that you couldn't do anything. It was set in metal, you know. So we had a type specimen book from photo lettering that looked like a telephone book. It was this fat. Wow. With techniques that they could do and all typefaces. I mean, thousands of typefaces. Some of them didn't even have names. Some of them just had a number. I still oh. have one of those catalogs back in storage in Chile, those type catalogs about this, this thing. Yeah. So I go through the catalog and I find a nice, bold, condensed typeface. Probably didn't have a name. Probably just had a number. And what I did was, on my mechanical board, I had the Kiss logo, Kiss logo, and I traced out that space for the title just in pencil on tracing paper. And I sent it into them and I said, double platinum, all caps, this typeface, make it fit this space, height and width, exact, boom, boom. So you have to stretch it or shrink it or whatever you have to do. You know, on the computer now we do that. we we'll grab the corner or we do anything. But back then it was different. So, and it came back and it was perfect. So I made it fit into that space. And uh, that's the cover. Now, the fact, uh, you know, then the four portraits on the inside, the fact that it's mylar, it's printed on mylar, plastic, silver plastic, not paper, mm -hmm. actually plastic, very thin. And uh, the reason why they settled on mylar was it's, uh, it's, the, it's, it's like a mirror finish. So there's no silver paper that has that kind of reflect, that reflective quality. Mm -hmm. It's shiny and it's silver, but it's not, it's nothing like mylar. Mylar is a, it's, it's it literally would, like a mirror. If it was paper, it would be kind of an opaque finish, like aluminum, but not yeah. a mirror, but not a mirror. It would be duller, yeah. it would be duller right. And so Howard Marks was the moving force in insisting that it would be on Mylar. And uh, Mylar, 
I, let me get myself in the right spot here. And uh, mylar was uh, 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 impossible to work with, impossible. And uh, everybody mean, told us so. You mean for printing? Yeah, and embossing. You only, embossing. You only use uh, flat colors. You use red on the cover and black on the inside. Yeah, it was the embossing that made it impossible. Ah, the embossing, yeah. So we had a printer come in from um, AGI, which stands for Album Graphics Incorporated. They're located in Chicago. Um, he came in to discuss the job. And uh, we told him what we wanted to do. And uh, he said, no, uh, no, you're crazy. You can't do it. Uh, he said, let me make, uh, Howard Mark said, well, show us what you want to do, make samples. So he went and he had dyes made, sculpted dyes, mm -hmm. where he could put them in a press and emboss these relief sculpted faces on silver paper or silver board. And he brought them in and showed them to us and they were, they were magnificent, really, really good. But Howard said, it's not shiny enough. <laughs> I said to Howard, they're beautiful. The fact that you have this thing in your head that has to be mirror shiny. I said, why don't you get rid of that idea and just look at it. It's silver and it's fantastic. And it's really embossed, a nice, a nice deep embossing. It's not shiny enough. So the, uh, the printer threw up his hands and he said, well, you know, I don't know what to do. And Howard said, well, we're not going to do it your way. And then the printer got really pissed off at Howard. I remember in the room. He said, you're just using me, aren't you? He's just <laughs> using me to make these samples for you. And you had no intention of giving me this job, did you? And Howard went, oh, I don't know. Blah, 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 you know. And the guy was right. The guy was right. So we get the, our other printer. The guy who handled a lot of printing for us in the past. And he was a broker, basically a broker. He said, I'll look into it. So he looked into it, he said, yeah, we can do it. We can do it. But the problem with the Mylar is this. It has a memory. So you can stamp into it and make a nice eighth of an inch high embossing. And a week from now, that's gonna be a 16th of an inch. It will retract. And a week after that, it's going to be a 32nd of an inch. It, it just keeps going back to where it used to be. It has a memory. It, because it doesn't want to be. Yeah, it, it's plastic. It just wants to go back. Mm -hmm. So if you look at any double platinum album today, it, it's hardly embossed. I mean, it's very, very it, low. It, it, it went flat over time. Yeah. There you go. Yes. Yeah, I mean, okay, they're still there, but... But the way we had it originally on that paper, you wouldn't believe it. It was so beautiful. Anyway, but it's nice and shiny and, uh, you know. So that, uh, that album won uh, awards for printing. Printing excellence in, in technology. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Not design. Because printing. You know, printing. Yeah. Interesting. And the printer was so proud of it that he that he pulled it off, that I think he submitted it to, you know, whatever printers competitions are out there. And Interesting. Well, so I know, I know it won some technological, you know, printing achievement awards. Yeah. And of course, uh, the four pictures inside are from a Barry Levine uh, photo shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just same same Pictures I used over and over and over again. And for the solo record, except yeah, yeah, except I would say uh, Aces. Aces is the only one. Right. That... Yeah, yeah, could be. I don't remember exactly, but yeah, somebody else pointed that out to me, right? Yeah. So, um, tell me about. Uh, I want to take a turn on, on on this show. Tell me about um, the kind of relationship you have with the band. Tell me, about, tell me about Gene. What do you remember about Gene and, and working with him? Okay, first of all, in general, I, I probably talked with 
more in depth with Gene and Paul than the other two. So your relationship with the band was mainly? Mainly Gene and Paul. Uh -huh. I, I talked to the other guys naturally, uh, you know, they were there. I mean, I had, a, I had to interact with them. They were in the office sometimes and blah, blah, blah. But Gene and Paul, a little bit more. So uh, Gene, uh, uh, everything you heard about Gene's ego and being an asshole are true. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and, uh, uh, and, but, but I, you know, but, uh, but I saw him so much that I saw other sides of him too. Of course. It wasn't all that, you know, but I saw him act like a jerk more, more than once and, uh, all ego driven and, uh, whatever. Excuse me. I got heartburn. Um, Probably from talking too much. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, that's okay. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm putting you through this. That's all right. Yeah. Uh, so Gene, uh, uh, you know, I mean, we have little things in common. He, we like like a lot of old cartoons and stuff like that. We could talk about things. I remember one time uh, we we're up in Massachusetts and we were shooting a video, uh, two songs for the Don Kirshner rock concert, which was a big popular TV show back then. Instead of instead of them going into the TV shoot studio and performing on stage for the Don Kirshner show like everybody else did, uh, Bill, good old Bill, he took charge. He said, "I'm going to rent out a space someplace, and we're going to tape the two songs, and we'll submit the tape to the Kirshner show, and they'll present it as though it's live right then and there. But I can control it. We're going to get was, great sound." I always wonder about that because they look like something the band put together themselves. There is it was, no, yeah. It doesn't look like. Uh, and here they are, ladies and gentlemen, the rock sensation kiss, and then it fades out and it fades up, and there they are. But it's our it's our tape. Mm -hmm. So we were taping up there in in some either an armory or an airplane hangar or someplace. I don't know. So there's a lot of waiting around, you know, you ever done stuff like this, uh, any kind of taping or video, you know, it's, or, a lot you know of, it's a lot of hurry up and wait. Yeah, a lot of that's the army, the old army saying hurry up and wait. Um, and even even still photography is like that if you have sets and stuff. So uh, we're a lot of hanging around. So I'm sitting on the equipment cases with next to Gene, he's sitting next to me. We're just kind of waiting. So we're chatting. And I remember we talked about uh, old cartoons and I said oh uh, do you remember Beaky Buzzard he said oh yeah Beaky Buzzard he was so happy you know so we started to sing the old Beaky Buzzard song together Beaky Buzzard was a baby buzzard but he was stupid <laughs> and his mother sent him out to get a bumblebee so they could eat him for dinner and so the buzzard would fly like this real slow and he had a big oh. one, Adam's apple sticking out. I remember. And, uh, and he had a dumb voice, do, 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 like that. I remember, I remember now. Okay. Yeah, and he sang the song, I'm looking for a baby, bumblebee, <laughs> do, 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 like that. So Gene, Gene and I sang the song together, which was a high point in my life. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, but you know, so we, we had moments like that where it was really nice. And uh, I remember one Christmas, Gene gave me a really nice gold Dunhill uh, cigarette lighter. And, uh, you know, he hates people who smoke and all that stuff. No smoking, you know, but he gave me the cigarette lighter, which I lost. Uh, it was a long, long, skinny Dunhill, if you know what a Dunhill lighter looks like, mm -hmm. you know. And I had it in my, you know, my Levi's in the watch pocket, you know, the little watch pocket. And if you sit down, it, it pops out out and I think I lost it in a cab nice. sitting there and getting out and uh, broke my heart because I like that lighter you know and he gave it to me so uh, but there were times when I wanted to punch Gene in the face really uh, you know and I got close wow I'm, I'm from that kind of background uh, if, if you know anything about me I was raised on the mean streets of Newark New Jersey you know, and it was, you know, it was a tough neighborhood and it was, it was all crime and it was wise guys. It was all wise guys. 
and uh, so you in my neighborhood. And you have that type of personality. I came out of that. You know, I came out of that. So when people give me some shit or when I feel being disrespected or dishonored and stuff like that. And I, I remember one time when Gene was talking to somebody and I don't know, it might have been Ken Kelly and it might have been Ken, he was describing to Ken what costume he was going to need for Love Gun 2 or something like that. And I'm standing there and uh, I needed somebody's attention, but I, I, you know, I let them have their conversation. But um, I think Gene started to talk to me and I was like, like this, I was totally bored with the whole thing. I'm looking like this, you know, and he, he says, look at me when I talk to you. And my hand went like this. Down here, though, down here, yeah. And I almost just let it fly. Something said to me, you're going to get fired. <laughs> if you do that. Don't, don't punch your more important client. I looked at him, I said, look. I'm beyond busy. You don't know how busy I am. Yeah. I'm the creative director of this advertising agency. You're, you're a client. Hello. I love you. But I have things to do and I have other clients. I, you know, really. You got to respect that. So there were times when he acted like an asshole like that, like full of himself. Full of himself. Hmm. Well, he's still. And, you know, he was spoiled. He was just spoiled as a kid. Well, he's still. And he like thought he was the, you know, the greatest thing, but he wasn't. He's still a little bit like that. I mean, but I think... Of course he is. That will never go away. I think... But he's mellow. He has mellow out, but I think also that uh, that Gene persona has become a character. It, a lot of it is acted out. It's not... Well, he doesn't know how to be genuine, so he just has to step into that role. But he doesn't know how to relax and be a, a normal, genuine human being. Hmm. Could be. So what so, about Paul? Paul, uh, and I like, by the way, I like Gene, you know, when he's, a, when he's close to being normal. <laughs> he's, he's an okay guy. When he's a nice, uh, Jewish, when he's a nice Jewish boy uh, format. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. And so, but, uh, but Paul, very different than Gene. And I, I can see why they wouldn't get along. For sure. Yeah, over the years, I can see. Uh, Paul, uh, Paul uh, uh, is a... Uh, quieter or way quieter uh he's you know he can be um he can come across as being aloof not not ego driven i'm full of myself kind of but a little distant maybe a little cool hard to open up and be like you know he doesn't slap you on the back and go ha 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 you know no, you're not gonna get that so uh but uh, but I, I had some nice moments with Paul. He uh, he came around much more often than anybody. Hmm. He was much more interested in album design when we were designing albums. He would come around because he knew that I was in the art department there working on the next album. So he would come around, and take a look, and uh, so it, it was his idea, like uh, asylum, mm -hmm. to. Uh, had faces with paint. He, he saw an album he liked by the motels. And uh, he said something like that. Maybe you could do something like that. And I said, okay, Paul, I'll try. I'll, I'll, I'll keep, you know. So I did something in that general direction. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but it wasn't really like that, but it was a little bit like that. So, so it's fair uh, to say that he got more involved in the art part of K. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. In, the, in the 80s, uh, progressively as... as and progressively over the years, yeah. The more famous they got. Right. So, and then the back cover, you know, uh, uh, I had these, the four guys, <clears throat> and I wanted to make it kind of resemble the front cover, which is that high contrast. Uh, it's actually, I think I used, I might have used Xeroxes. I, I had pictures of them, and I put it in the Xerox machine just to get, to lose all the tone, you know, and make it contrasty, and then I'd make a photo stack from the Xerox, and blah, 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 like that. So on the back it was like Xeroxes and I cut them together to make the arrangement. And then I'd make one piece print. Then I said, I'll, <clears throat> I'll hand color them with some watercolor or Dr. Martin dye. Use Dr. Martin's? No. No? 
Oh, you use computer mostly to get your color, right? And when I don't, I use mostly pencils. And back in the day, it was oil, but I haven't used and acrylics, but I haven't used that in. Oh, Dr. Years. Mark dyes. They're uh, you know, extremely intense. And uh, I used to have a whole set of them here. Mm. Maybe I maybe I gave them away. Hey, Dennis, but, I don't want I, I, I don't want to ruin your story, but you realize you're gonna have to tell it again when we reach asylum, right? <laughs> when we do what? When we reach the asylum chapter. Oh yeah 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 that's right. <laughs> but uh, Paul Paul came in and he helped me color the back cover. Oh I gave him a br yeah I gave him a brush, and we mixed on we sat together and we chatted. He was on one side of the drawing board, I was on the other, working upside down. And we chatted. It was nice. It was nice. Very warm. And then we talked about healthy eating. And I said, you know, ice cream, it's but like, you know, you're gonna get a heart attack and all. He said, Oh, in California they have this ice cream, very low fat, and no sugar or whatever. I said, Oh, they don't have it here. He said, I'll send you some. And he did. Wow. He sent me a whole case of ice cream. Wow. Dry ice. It was very sweet of him. Very sweet. So I have these nice things that all of them you know, did. Paul never uh, did anything to make me angry with him or anything like that. Never. Well, he's a, he's, like you said, he's a more reserved person. Reserved, yeah. Right. And he's, I mean, he's, he's got a narcissistic quality about him. Well, for sure, for sure. You can see, you could, you could pick up on that. Uh, but, but by and large, he was just fine. Uh, like Gene, on the other hand, made, pissed me off sometimes, you know. Now the other two guys, uh, and it's funny because Gene and Paul are kind of like uh, middle class Jewish guys. Yeah. Uh, Ace and Peter are probably uh, not middle class, or probably a little lower than that, I'm guessing. Well, they're from the. And they're from Brooklyn and Bronx. Respectively, yeah. Which is like the same kind of neighborhood I was probably from in Newark. Mm -hmm. Also poor. Um, you would think I could relate to those two guys a lot more, but not necessarily. You know, not necessarily. Uh, uh, I, I, I found Peter to be kind of nuts, crazy. Peter, just, I saw him at a convention one day. I hadn't seen him in years at a KISS convention, 96. <laughs> you know, I did Peter's two, two albums for Peter, Out of Control and the other one, whatever the hell it's called. Uh, a picture of his face. Huh? And he looks kind of wet. Yeah, I remember that, that when he's wearing a beard. Yeah, I did that and I did out of control. So I, I worked with Peter, you know, after Kiss. But I remember I saw him at the convention. I went up to him and said, hey, Peter, how you doing? And he looks at me and he goes, uh, I got a Mercedes, I, I got a Rolex, I got a house in Connecticut. I said, all I said was, how you doing? <laughs> and he was serious. I got this, I got that. Like before saying hello? Yeah. I said, okay, good. I didn't have anything to say to him after that. Okay, have a nice day. You know, my perception of Peter, and I, I know a lot of people have very strong opinions about him, especially Jim and Paul. Um, my perception of him for what, I, what I've heard of people who know him and what I've read in his biography is that I think he was never diagnosed, but I think he had a bipolar disorder. Yeah, I, I agree with you. He's, uh, he's very emotional and his emotions shift like, like that. Uh, whether for good or bad, that's depending on yeah, yeah, yeah. anyone's experience. But I think he had the same thing that Carrie Fisher had and, uh, and Margot Kidder had, which was bipolar disorder, you know? I, I had a, a, yeah, well, yeah. Which there tend to- I, I have firsthand experience with that. I've seen, I know people who have it. It's very difficult. They tend very to have a, 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 a emotional shifting, a burst of rage and burst of happiness too. Uh, it's just that there's no middle ground. Yeah, depending on what kind of bipolar you have, your happiness could last for a year and a half. Mm. 
and then you can shift over and be depressed for another year. Yeah. Some people, they switch daily. So I don't know, you know. And so, I, can, I can understand how it can be difficult to deal with a person like that. Difficult and it's not is, possible. Especially, yeah, especially when you have a, multi, a multi-million dollar business going on. You know? I don't know. I, I, frankly, I, I, from the stories I hear from Paul, and I believe them all, I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I don't know how they could hang in there that long with these guys. Me, I think I would have washed my hands of the whole thing mm-hmm. and say, you know, I can't deal with this anymore. But they hung in there. Uh, Ace, uh, as you know, Ace uh, may have had a drinking problem. (laughs) And, uh, you know, but I drank a lot back then too. So, you know. (laughs) Well, if somebody else was drinking, I probably didn't care. But, uh, but I didn't drink all the time, every day, you know, like that. And uh, if I had work to do, I was sober. Uh, did you ever sit down and, and, and drink with Ace? And say again? Did you ever sit down and have a drink with Ace? No. No. I don't think he'd be a good drinking partner. Not my type of, not my type of drinking partner. He was. But, uh, you know, when we did that shot in the tunnel with the lights and the blue neon. Yeah. That was done late at night because we had, a, you know, it was an office building. So we had to go when it was empty. Uh-huh. So we probably didn't even start to shoot until maybe 1 a.m. And he had a trailer so he could get dressed in it, provided him with a trailer, you know. <laughs> and he had, two, he had a couple of girls in there. And uh, he was drinking champagne out of the bottle, you know. The whole time. And he was really drunk. You come out of the trailer. Okay, Ace, you know, pose, do this, do this. And he's like weaving all over the place. (laughs) And we told him, we told him to get a good exposure of neon. We can't use flash because it kills the neon. It looks dead. It doesn't glow. Right. So, so we have to we, use a longer exposure. Longer exposure a, that requires the subject. He has to be still for a quarter of a second. He has to be still, right? Quarter of a second. Quarter of a second. Just like this. That's enough. <laughs> he couldn't. He could hardly do it. <laughs> so we got very few pictures that are usable. Oh, and then he broke the neon. What? Yeah. He had like a fake lightsaber or something. Some. Some prop he was holding in. He turned around, bang! Broke one of the tubes, bang. Session's over. And he laughed, ah, 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 you know. <laughs> now this is another time I wanted to beat the shit out of somebody. <laughs> it wasn't funny. There we are at 2 a.m. I'm exhausted. We got makeup, we got a costume person there. We got um, Bernard. And three assistants, me, maybe somebody else from my office, I don't know. And he's just wasting our fucking time. Wasting our time. Really wasting our time. So you got very little shots. No no wonder that there are not many shots from There's a few, but there's not many. Hmm. And uh, when we were shooting the uh, Dynasty cover at... uh, Francisco Scavulo, uh, I was, uh, besides drinking, uh, I was gambling. <laughs> so I had the daily racing form under my arm. Horses, you know, horses. The most expensive daily newspaper, by the way. At the time, it cost a buck and a quarter. All the other papers cost 10 cents. The daily racing form today, if you were going to buy it today, $15 every day. Like a magazine. So if you want to buy the form and go to the racetrack. But anyway, so Ace sees the racing form under my arm. And he says, ah, you bet I'm the horse is curly, you know. I said, yeah, I do. <laughs> he says, what do you got today? What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I said, I'm going to bet the daily double, the first and second race. 
I said, but it's not going to pay much because they're both favorites. I said, but I cannot, in my handicapping skill, I cannot see past these two horses. I think they're both going to win. They're both going to pay short money, but maybe the daily double will pay. You know, if you pick the, the horse in the first race and the horse in the second race, called, that's called a daily double in those days. I said, if the, if the daily double pays $6, I'll be happy. And that's terrible for a daily double. That's a very small payout for that kind of a bet. But I said, they're favorites. Eh, here's $200. Gives me $200 bills. <laughs> and put it on that for me, okay? I said, Ace, it's not going to pay much. And these are horses, Ace. They could lose. <laughs> I said, I want you to know you could lose. So I call my bookie, make the bet, $200 on those two. And oh yeah, and for me, uh, give me a $5 bet, <laughs> $205. So it wins, it wins, it wins, it comes in. And it paid about $6. So uh, his 200 turned into uh, 600. Um, Something like that. My arithmetic, maybe not. So I, I went, I didn't have, yeah, I went to the bank and took out, I couldn't wait to get paid by the bookmaker because I don't know when I'm going to see Ace again. So I went to the ATM or someplace and I got 600. And I gave it to Ace. Here you go, Curly. Act! <laughs> well, that's a great story. That was about it. That was about it. Gambling with Ace. Well, Dennis, uh, this was super fun. Um, you know, people say to me, they said, Dennis, <laughs> you're drinking and gambling too much. I said, look, I don't do it anymore. But in my life, I spent 70% of my money on drinking and gambling and women. And the other 30%, I just wasted. <laughs> well, thank you, Dennis. This was fun. And uh, hopefully it's been fun for you. I mean, uh, just recalling some of these stories and just talking about the design part. It really, <laughs> really sucks. And I can't wait till it's over. <laughs> I try to get some kind of reaction. <laughs> All right, I'm done. All right. See you next time. Bye, Claudio. It was great. <laughs>